just a massa. Last week, they were causing trouble, kicking the beehive. I didn't kick the beehive at all. I am sweet like honey. This is not my fault. All I know is that the whole Jonathan Bush, jealous of Glenn Tillman, John Glenn Tillman, grumpy with Jonathan Bush thing, may have kicked off again, all because of you. Not my fault. Fault. It's the April 13th episode of Health in Two Point. I am blameless. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. So, what I did you do? Anything. All I did was interview Jonathan Bush and Faye Rotenberg about Firefly Health's $40 million fundraise, which we neglected to cover because we were having too much fun on Clubhouse last week. <laughs> so we're covering it right now. And, I'm, and this is just to say that that interview, which is highly entertaining, if you haven't seen it, check out WTF Health on YouTube or visit the healthcare blog and search for this sucker. But yeah, Jonathan Bush in top form, and he may or may not have said some things about Glenn Tolman after the 22 minute mark of that. Well, actually very complimentary, right? He was like jealous. <laughs> well, he's like, the only reason I'm back in healthcare is to compete with Tolman. No, he, that's not true. He did a great job. So I mean, it was, a, it was good, but I may have inadvertently started some shit. Oh. And they're in the same space. That's the thing that's so strange, right? So it's like by some like bizarro circumstance, Glenn, they, they are, they are headed. the non-healthcare navigator's healthcare navigator has ended up being the same thing as this primary care, not a navigator navigator <laughs> with a health plan benefit around it. Like, I don't understand how these worlds have collided, but they have. And I am in the middle of it. No, I'm joking. I'm not. You, you, like, the worlds have collided. <laughs> You're like that little tugboat in the Suez Canal, navigating the ever, ever green, ever bright, ever whatever it was called through the Suez Canal, and you're causing a some kind of block. Anyway, anyway, anyway. To shipwreck and drown is right now. <laughs> having said all of that, having said all oh of that, God. the commentary was about an eighteen billion dollar deal, and for finally today, this week, we've got a bigger deal than that. So let's oh go my do. God. Bigger by one, one higher, Matthew Holt. Hang on, I've got so much. You can't see because it's too bright here, but go. Okay. Microsoft buys Nuance for 16 billion plus 3 billion in debt. Holy cow, Matthew Holt, is Microsoft taking over healthcare? Well, not exactly, but what they are doing is making a play in the cloud space, right? Because they are the number two to, to AWS and cloud. And they're obviously lining up stuff to go on it. And Nuance has basically got everybody in the world who does voice dictation, which is a lot of in healthcare, on their platform. And moving that is one thing. And then, of course, Nuance is doing something else, which also rivals Amazon, which is that they do voice uh, dictation, natural language, uh, natural language recognition. Uh, they've got a product called DAX, right? And there are lots of little startups which are trying to do this, which is basically trying to capture the encounter between the doctor and the patient and make it all automated so people have to write notes into Epic. We'll see how it goes. It's certainly a big deal. Um, it's a, they're both real companies, right? No one is a real uh, company. So I think it's going to be interesting. But the question is, you know, is this going to make Nuance slow down and have those little rivals have a chance to catch up? We'll see. All right. You got a tip off on this one. Cohere Health raises 36 million. What does this do? Yeah, this is a Series B. I think they're at about, uh, they're on the odds around 50 million now. This is somebody that were doing prior authorization between health plans and uh, providers. Supposed to be much cleverer than that. I don't understand it. We're good. All right. How about a lightning round of IPO rumors? IPO rumor, Privia Health, go. Making a profit, medical group in the East Coast, doing well, mostly fever service business though. IPO rumor, Village MD, valued at 10 billion. We got that Walgreens deal, go. Sounds expensive, but you know, really cool IPO uh, medical group. IPO rumor, Bright Health, but more importantly, they're acquiring Zipnosis. Uh, Zip, I don't understand the IPO. Zipnosis is kind of a asynchronous telemedicine platform. Very cool. All right. Matthew Holt. <laughs> Are we done in two minutes? Yeah, you did it. <laughs> The whole thing's actually over in two minutes?
I was assuming I was leaving you a chance for another one. No. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. I'm getting too good. I thought that was, I thought you'd have a lot more to say about those IPO rumors than you well, did. I was trying to finish them off in time to get one at the end and I didn't realize there was no more one to get in. I mean, look, the, the, by the way, there's another IPO, which we may have to discuss tomorrow, which is uh, actually happening this week. So perhaps we should wait till it happens, which is Agilon Health, which is in the, uh, the, 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 the Medicare Advantage space. And there was one called uh, Agilent, which, Agilent? Alignment, sorry, Alignment, which happened, I, I can't get the mix. <laughs> which is kind of like Medicare Advantage plans, Medicare Advantage managed care groups. They're all fusing together. The joke is that if you took Kaiser Permanente as a medical group, excised out the bit which looks after Medicare Advantage, floated on the stock market, it'd be worth about $200 billion. <laughs> I mean, the amount of people in Medicare Advantage that all of the startup Medicare Advantage plans like Clover and Devoted and, uh, you know, Alignment of, and, and all the, plat the, the, the folks below them like ChemMed and o Cover, is so small compared to the amount that Humana covers and United covers and Kaiser covers. It's like, you know, under 1% of Medicare Advantage. So if they're all worth 10 billion, God knows what the real plans. I mean, Humana's worth like 4 trillion. I don't know. They're not struggling. All right. Around, right? I guess well, that's why not. Why is everybody picking on Kaiser? Jonathan Bush had a little, not to bring it full circle, but I'm going to bring it full circle. He called he called Firefly a bloatless Kaiser. That's well, the no, no. That is not an insult to Kaiser. Okay, Kaiser has got some bloat going on because Kaiser's got, you know, started in 1937. According to but Jonathan, Kaiser started for looking architectural buildings that they wish they could probably unload. But I digress. Go on. Uh, I'm actually not certain because Kaiser stopped building hospitals in the 90s and started again in the mid 2000s because it was projecting, you know, baby boomers in 20 years' time getting sick and going to hospital. Now, Kaiser, don't forget started in the 1930s you care you don't care you look at me like well, let, let, let me just say kaiser started on the principle of keeping people healthy and keeping and them out of hospital in the 30s <laughs> right and they basically have kept that up ever since and no one's imitated them because everyone else in american healthcare makes a fortune by many people in hospital and doing more fee for service business on them kaiser's just shadow priced along but you can imagine if you started Kaiser today, it would look more like Devoted or more like Firefly than it looks like Kaiser because why would you need the hospitals? Because you can buy them from everyone else on the margin cheap. And your job is to keep people out of them. In theory. In theory. By the way, I will have Dr. Robbie Pearl from who was the CEO of, of Kaiser, uh, sorry, Permanente Medical Group, part of Kaiser. He's going to be on TCB Gang this week. Okay. And TSCB Gang, for those who may not remember, is on Thursdays at, at 4 1 p.m. PM when we're not screwing around on Clubhouse. 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific when we're not screwing around on Clubhouse. Are we going to screw around on Clubhouse some more or do you not like it no, so much? Really? I don't know. <laughs> you didn't like it much. We'll have to find some other way of screwing around on Clubhouse that's not at 1 p.m. and yeah, not know. upsetting Jessica. Maybe it's like a late night thing. Need a little wine to... All right. You know, that's, that's what we'll, we'll, we'll go late night. We'll, yeah. we'll figure out something. We'll the gears here. I don't know. All right. Now we're just bantering. You should get us out of here. Let me get out of this. Okay. Find out more <laughs> about where we're going, what we're doing, and when we're clubhousing. Follow us. Follow along with us over on Twitter. He is at Bolty Boy. I am over at Just Amasa. And to never miss an episode of Health in 2.0 or any of the exciting WTF Health interviews or Matthew's interviews or the THCB gang, you can subscribe to the THCB newsletter over at thehealthcareblog.com. We pull all of the content from the week on the blog together, deliver it directly into your inbox. And right now it could come to you on Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, or Saturdays, because we cannot seem to land on a consistent day for this. <laughs> Saturday had more opens than Thursdays or Fridays, so it might be Saturday oh, from now. To spend the weekend with us. We're good weekend fodder, I suppose. <laughs> You're like waffles, and I'm like maple syrup. We're a good pair. <laughs> and on that note, let's get out of this. I'm Justin Moss, and that's Matthew Holt. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Health in 2.00. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.